Well, welcome all to so this week. We return to the um, more traditional position of these videos, and we have something that I've been looking at what getting for a little while now. Again, a bit like the beef you've seen away. Except I, I've already got one of these, but not this one. I have the US Navy version for the Skyro that I got the jet kill during during the Vietnam War. Obviously, this is the Air Force version. You can see um, again Vietnam. Um, Vietnam War and uh, yeah looking at the other side of the coin with this one so it is of course a Douglas A1J Sky Raider Tamiya 148 scale fuse start of 20, uh, length of 24.8 centimetres and a wingspan of 31.7 centimetres so a big aeroplane this is a large aircraft in this bigger scale <coughs> excuse me so, um, yeah, box art straight away puts you in the zone. It puts you right there in in Vietnam, you know, with the with the aircraft flying low over the treetops doing the close air support role that they, they performed during that service. Maybe supporting excuse me, I need to drink, my throat's wrong. Maybe supporting That's better. Um, it just got out from Newark, um, Air Museum, where I purchased it. So, you know, you can see there's mist. You can see, you know, see the the humidity of the, the heat and the the, the and and the um, yeah the humidity because obviously it starts damp, isn't it? Rising, possibly supporting Huey. It's on a a pilot rescue mission or something like that. You know, the, the Midnight Cowboy, set the Sandy missions. Yeah, it's fantastic artwork. To me, this artwork is worth a thousand of the CGI I mean, it's used by a certain red box company. But yes. So, uh, yeah, let's open it up and we'll see what we get with this one. So, so no, I'm not going to debug just yet because i um, not sure when I'm going to get around to building this one. Hopefully, it won't be too long. Uh, I've got a Hataka set for Southeast Asia US Air Force, but I'm not sure where it is at this moment in time. I uh, could order another set, which I might well do anyway. So it's either be when I find it or do that one. I have got another Vietnam War, or a couple of the couple of Vietnam War era aircraft I can do more readily. So I might look at doing those with US Navy ones. Okay, so obviously straight away. All the hard points are visible, it's the underwing. You get the idea of the <coughs> full wingspan there, just for scale comparison. Here's an Airfix Spitfire in 72 scale. Just gives you an idea of size. So, it looks beautifully detailed. Beautifully detailed. The flaps you can pose up or down. Fuel tank, upper wing surfaces, landing gear legs, with the tail hook. You've got some hard points as well. I think that's a, if you've done the fuel tank, I think it's a wing tip fuel tank, or the wing fuel tanks there. Yeah. So here we have the propeller. I'm looking where they've put the attachment points to that on it. Get a lot of these poly caps. It seems to be some suggestion you can sort of swap around. Obviously, one of them is for a prop assembly. There seems to be some suggestion you can sort of change your uh, loadout so it up a little bit occasionally. It's the engine. Basic, but for what you're going to see, I think it's fine. Exhaust pipes. Oh, there's a lot of actually a slide board. They've actually got holes in the end. That's cool. And then there's the uh, this with the tail wheel. Okay, go that way up. This one is <laughs> stores. In fact, I think this this whole two sprues are just 
external stores. You got another fuel tank there. Bombs, more bombs, rocket pods. There's a big gun pod somewhere around here. Maybe even that one. <clears throat> got the tailplane. My rocket rails, different types of rockets and stuff like that. All sorts of weaponry there. And there's some of the massive uh, main wheels. Not weighted, so you'd have to stand a bit off to give it some of that weight. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, that will go off the up. Finally, got the transparencies here in their little bag. Not many to this, actually. Windscreen, the canopy, rear, there's two landing lights in there, and the gun sight. And you see we've actually got the pilot included in this one, which is very cool. So there's the fuselage, big, big, big old aeroplane. <laughs> With the rudder already on it and everything like that, so it's not poseable, it's a bit of a shame in some ways. It's nice to be able to pose up all the flight surfaces. I'm sure you could have the razor saw and stuff like that. These are the big air brakes, the big dive brakes. There's one, two, and there's one underneath that comes down as well. You can pose, you pose those open. I've actually flipped through some of already. This is at the higher end of Tamiya's kit expense wise. Um, was thirty pounds. The uh, navy version, of 20, uh, twenty-seven. It's interesting. It's actually a lower price than the navy. So it's the general paint scheme. Salute, general paint scheme. And this is actually one-to-one -one scale. That is support for the model. That's one forty-eight scale there. Uh, same size as the model. So that's the <laughs> that's the uh, full size of the aircraft. I'm actually tempted to put this on the wall, to be honest. Because uh, it's really nice, and it will help. It will help me help when I come to come to build it. I'll be able to see where where I'm putting things. But yeah, let me see the other side for you. Very very cool. I'm going to keep I'm going to keep that out because I will be putting it up shortly. So the two paint schemes. A, the 56 Special Operations Wing, 602nd Fighter Squadron, number 029, in 1969 Thailand. It's called Socket Tuam. CC029 is the town number, so it's 42029. That's in the standard scheme. This is the box art one with the green and green, brown, and the light grey cream colour underneath. Option B is a uh, 56 Special Operations Wing 625 Squadron and it's turn number 14, so it's 42014. And that's got a black underside. It's got these stripes on it as well. So yeah, not quite sure what I'm going to do. I was going to do, I was going to do that because it's like the classic one. Well, it's got a name and everything, it's pretty cool, but I don't know, that could be cool as well. The, a bit like the B B B52 Black LED model. Yeah. Very cool, very cool. The actual instruction sheet here. So, history of the Sky Raider there. So many start with this the cockpit. All progresses nice and quickly, really. I think the engine. There. I like that you can put it all together without the propeller. Initially, so you can. It's good for painting. Exhaust and things on there. So in the undercarriage bay, notice there uh, the uh, part of the interior of the bay is actually attached to the door. It's an interesting concept, I've not seen that before. Wings together. I don't think it'd take too much work to make it wheels up if you wanted to. I'll be doing this one on the ground myself. Main landing gear. It's quite quite simple, a lot, lot to it, but quite simple. There's the flaps, and then you can pose them down if you want to. It you know, flaps up there, you can see it shows you up or down. Put 
open for a dive brake and tail wheel. So if you want to do it open, you can do it like this. Close, just put it straight in. And everything else, you got the little hydraulic arm to put it in, and then it's the same for the side. So it's open. And this is sort of how it's putting, putting the guns in. I think they're 20mm cannons on this. Um, and the dive brakes and everything as well. There's the option to have them open, obviously. Very cool. Drop tanks. Get onto the stores now. See what I mean? Polar caps go inside the drop tank. So it looks like you can just turn them on and off if you want to. It's interesting. Mounting the central one. Mounting all the hard points. Some transfer placement. And this is A type. And all the weapons here. Now, what I actually think is going to be easiest is, is to apply the paint scheme and all the weapon, all the um, transfers first, then come back and add all these external pieces, paint them separately, and add them, add them on. So that's going to make it easier. And B's loadout there. So different loadouts, different missions. A full raft of spares if you don't use them all, obviously. But you can do it just after a mission, no, you don't need any at all. It's how to build your various different weapons. Mark 82, LDGP bomb, uh, standard and with long um, standard fuse, LAU 68 rocket pod, SU 11 7.62 gun pod, so it's a minigun, I suppose. M117 bomb, LAU3 rocket pod, and SUU14 rocket tube. Not the bazookas the P47s used to carry in there. Not those ones. Alright, so then you've got the how to build a kit sheet. And you've got all the transfers here, which look to be Tamiya's usual high quality. Through the uh, throwing my finger at the tracing paper, I can't feel any great lumps in it. So yeah, very very cool. So yes, I think I think I will do this one as the, as a socket to them. To be honest, I think that, that's a quite a cool name. Um, but uh, yes, it's going to be a very big aeroplane and a very nice kit to build. I I, I hope. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to immensely to be honest. Uh, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be good. It's gonna have a real presence on the on the shelf with the other the other models. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that one looks cool. That looks cool. I do like this with the this scheme underneath. But yeah, so thank you very much for watching. I hope that's helped. If you're thinking about it, you can now you've seen you see what the model looks like. It's Tammy, you can't really go too wrong with Tammy. There must be an awful Tammy kit out there, I'm sure there is. I know I've heard their Centurion wasn't much to write home about. Um, the 135th scale Centurion tank wasn't much to write home about. But, but there must be there must be others. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this one looks like a really safe bet, a really good one. So yes, thank you for watching, as I say. Take care, be well, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.